This work regards spontaneous gold corrosion and nanoparticle formation in artwork and was done by researchers of the University of Granada in Spain. Pure gold is the least reactive metal, but gold and its alloys may degrade under certain scenarios. The gold demand to yield solid objects drove the process of gilding. Gilding is the use of a gold layer to decorate some other material, including metals. In the gilded tin method studied here, a thin gold leaf covers a thicker tin foil. Golded tin, gilded tin was common during the Italian Renaissance, but was also used to decorate the plasterwork of walls in the medieval Alhambra palaces of Granada in Spain, as well as their mucarnas, including those of the Lion's Palace. Damaged gilded tin is found in, in semi-open areas of the palaces at runoff and water condensation sites. Most of the gilded tin is lost, but remnants show gray, black, golden, or whitish color with an odd purple shade. Here we show that the purple color is caused by gold nanospheres of about 70 nanometers formed after gold dissolution and precipitation in the absence of agua regia, the traditional dissolution process. The white gypsum coat added during the 19th century restorations highlights the purple color. Damage is enhanced by exposure to chloride-rich aerosols, which were abundant in Mediterranean and Granada. The sequence of layers of our corroded gilded tin from out, inside to outside is as follows. Layer one is a gray black metal foil. Layer two is a metallic yellow, sheaf, yellow, yellow leaf. Layer three is a fine shiny covering. And layer four is a purple tinted whitish coat. Crater-shaped voids are created in the golden leaf, surely formed during its burnishing on the tin foil. The origin of the purple color was unknown until we applied high-resolution microscopes to minute samples to acquire high-quality compositional analyses and images at the nano and micro scale. The gilded tin structure and chemical composition are shown here. Note that over the gold leaf, a new layer is formed made of tin corrosion compounds, hereafter grime, which is covered by a gypsum coat at the surface. Crater-shaped voids are frequent on the gilded tin. In voids, the gold leaf is worn away, exposing the tin foil. Corrosion compounds of the tin foil crept onto the gold leaf via these channels, forming the grime. Gold nanoparticles appear randomly embedded within this whitish coat. The degraded tin foil contains romarkite, a stannous oxide mineral. The grime has a composition similar to the tin foil, and the surface coat is made of gypsum with minor amounts of silicates. Gold nanoparticles are randomly dispersed within the sample, though mostly deposited onto silicates in the gypsum coat. Voids and fissures in the gold leaf are channels through which moisture reached the underlying tin foil. These channels provide an ionic pathway between the two metals, pro promoting microgalvanic cells. The severely degraded tin foil shows spongy bone type texture in cross section and cracked mud type texture at the surface. The non-conductive organic film between the tin and the gold, which improves their direct electrical contact, is almost lost. In the presence of moisture and chlorides, the tin foil degrades by galvanic corrosion. The porous grime shows cauliflower morphology and is made of nanocrystals of aberrite and hydroromarkite, which are stannous hydroxychloride minerals. Tin-based globular nanoparticles cover the grime, which embeds gold nanoflakes and spherical gold nanoparticles. Image A is a general view of the corrosion processes in our gilding, and image B shows galvanic corrosion of the tin foil. Here tin, the less noble metal, is the anode and undergoes oxidation by losing electrons according to the anodic reaction, and thus corrodes. Consequently, electrons move from the tin toward the gold, which is the more noble metal. 
However, gold does not participate in the cathodic reaction. Gold remains protected, supporting the cathodic reaction, which is oxygen reduction. The galvanic corrosion pro process explains neither the weathering of the gold leaf nor the gold nanoparticle formation. Note in this image that the two gold faces show different textural features. The inner face shows a cobble-like structure made of tabular crystals encircled by nanoscale channels. In contrast, the smooth outer face has abundant nano and micro-sized pits. Larger pits result from coalescence of smaller ones, yielding microflakes. Corrosion of the gold outer face is caused by its partial coverage with grime, yielding differences in oxygen concentration on its surface. As a result, oxygen concentration cells are created and differential aeration corrosion occurs. The sites of gold leaf uncovered by grime are well oxygenated and remain cathodic and so protected, while covered areas have low oxygen concentration and become the anode. Gold anodic anodic dissolution occurs in these localized oxygen deficient areas in parallel with pit growth. Therefore, copious pitting covers this external gold face, coexisting with gold nanospheres that emerge and detach from the surface. This process is enabled because the gold-3 ion is a strong oxidant that can be reduced by almost any other metal or metal ion. We propose that in our chloride-rich environment, gold-3 is reduced to metallic gold by ubiquitous stannous compounds producing gold nanospheres. The reactions taking place are redox, redox processes. Afterward, the gold nanospheres have translocated vertically through the grime towards the surface ornament and deposited mostly onto the silicates of the gypsum coat, which are gold pre-robbing agents. In closing, we explain the degradation of this bimetallic artistic gilding, including gold dissolution and nanoparticle precipitation under natural conditions in the presence of chlorides over half a millennium. This shows how an unexpected combination of electro electrochemical processes yield purple gold color on the surface of our damaged gilded tin. Gold nanoparticles on corroded gildings likely occur in other monuments, but go unnoticed due to the, the lack of an overlying whitish layer on the ornament to highlight the purple tint. We thank the University of Granada and the Alhambra and Generalife Council.